Praise the Lord. Let's come together as we pray. Praise the living Jesus. We are gathering together unto thee. We are gathering together unto thee. Unto the from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 and I'll read from here and the Lord God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the hair and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Praise the Lord. So our second Bible text will be taken from the book of John chapter 15. John chapter 15 verse 5. Okay. Thank you, media. And he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Praise the Lord. Right now, we're going to be praying. Before we pray, the introduction is product, productivity, as in fruitfulness, is one of the mandates God gave to his children. It is not negotiable. It is a command. And if you are a true child of God, all you need to do in order to be productive is to abide in the Lord who gave the command. Praise the Lord. So we are going to be praying. The first prayer point is, Father, I thank you for all your mercies I have enjoyed over the labor of my hands in Jesus' name. Let us begin to pray, begin to thank God. God has called us unto fruitfulness, and therefore, we are going to be fruitful. I want us to begin to thank God. Thank God for your life. That God, I thank you for your mercy I have enjoyed over the fruit of my hands, over the labor of my hands. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for me. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to enjoy the fruit of my labor. 
when I go to work, I get paid. When I do business, I get paid for it. You have enabled me to enjoy the labor of my hands. Father, I thank you. Father, we worship you. I give you praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. The second prayer point is, Father, deliver me and my family from the spirit of unproductivity. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray. Deliver me from all unfruitful efforts. Father, deliver me from unproductivity in every way, in all ramification of my life. In the name of Jesus, because I have been waiting upon you, O oh God. Father, deliver me in the name of Jesus. Father, deliver me, deliver my family from every spirit of unproductivity in every areas of life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Number three, say, Father, you are the source of productivity. I hide, I, I hide myself in you. Help me to be productive in my career in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray. Father, I hide myself in you. Help me to be productive in everything I do. When I am in my business place, help me to be productive. Help me to be productive in the name of Jesus. Father, help me in, my mar in the marketplace. Lord, help me to be productive in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have prayed. Amen. Number four says, Father, in my career, help me to be faithful. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray and ask God, Father, help me to be faithful. For this, it is required of a steward to be found faithful in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray. According to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Say, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Father, help me to be faithful. Let's begin to pray. Lord of hosts, help me to be faithful even in little things. Whatever thing, oh God, you have put in my hand, in my working place, in my marketplace, help me, oh God, to be faithful. Help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful in my actions. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Number five, we are going to be praying and say, Father, help me to pursue my career according to your standard for the glory of your name in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray that Lord help me. Let's open our Bible to the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Help me, oh God, to pursue my career according to your standard in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book, in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 17, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Begin to pray to God, Lord help me, oh God, help me to pursue my career according to your standard. As expected, Lord help me, oh God, to pursue my career according to your standard in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 verse 30, 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto, unto thee. Number 6, we are going to be praying. And our prayer is, Father, in my career, let me seek the kingdom of God. Let me seek the kingdom of heaven first, in the name of Jesus. Brethren, open your mouth and begin to pray to God. Help me to seek you. Let me to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I tell you, brethren, when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all those things that you are pursuing will follow you. Everything will come easily. Let's begin to ask God, Father, help me. Even as I've been waiting upon you, as I deny myself of food in this season, Lord, help me to seek the kingdom of God. Help me to seek the kingdom of God. Let me seek the kingdom of heaven. Lord, Lord, and let every other sin be added unto me. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Number seven. Let's open to the book of John chapter 15 verse 5. John chapter 15 verse 5. 
The Bible says, I am the true vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and high in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I want us to pray and ask God, Father, help me to abide in you at all times. Never to follow anything to disconnect me in Jesus' name. Never allow me to, never allow anything to disconnect me in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray. The prayer point is, Lord, help me to abide in you at all times. Never allow anything to disconnect me in Jesus' name. Father, do not allow anything to disconnect me from you. Help me, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help me to abide in you. Never let me be disconnected. When I abide in you, Lord, I will bear much fruit according to your word. In my character, in my dealing, Lord, help me, O oh God, to bear much fruit. Help me to abide in you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Number eight, the Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. We are going to be praying. Father, in this evil day, please strengthen me to walk wisely, making the best use of my time in Jesus' name. Let us begin to pray. Father, because of your name, According to your word, you say I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Help me, oh God, in this evil day. Please strengthen me to walk wisely, making best use of my time in the name of Jesus. Father, help me to make best use of my time. Never let me be found wanting when you want me to do something. Don't let me be found wanting. Don't let me be busy with worldly pleasures. Don't let me be busy with the, with the social media. Oh God, help me to use my time wisely. Let me use my time for you to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, help us. Lord, help me. Help me, oh God, to make use of the time that you have given me. According to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Number number nine. Number nine. Let's open to the book of Daniel, chapter one, verse twenty. The book of Daniel, chapter one, verse twenty. The Bible says, "And in all the matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all." the magicians and astrologers they were in all Israel. Praise the Lord. I want us to begin to pray right now. Here, they're talking about Daniel and his team. Daniel found ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers. We are going to cry unto God that Father in my career grant me wisdom so that my light will shine brighter than my maid to your glory in Jesus name let's begin to pray Father Lord God Almighty help me oh God grant me wisdom in my career grant me wisdom in my working place grant me, grant me wisdom in my ministry grant me wisdom oh in the marketplace so that Lord of hosts in your name my light will shine brighter it will shine brighter than my colleagues it will shine brighter than my mates to the glory of your name in the name of Jesus Father help me let me to stand out in the name of Jesus as nothing can hinder the great light of the sun from coming forth help me to come and shine in the name of Jesus help me bring me out and use me bring me out oh God and let me stand out to the glory of your name in the name of Jesus help me Lord by your wisdom grant me wisdom so that my light will shine to the glory of your name. Let my light shine, O oh God, that my mates to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Number 10. We are going to be praying and say, Father, 
as your hand was with Isaac, let your hand be with me for favor in all run fruitfulness in Jesus' name. When we look at that book of Genesis chapter 26 from 2 to 14, the Lord blessed Isaac. Isaac listened to instruction and the Lord prospered him. The Lord blessed Isaac beyond even his own imagination because of what his father Abraham has done for the Lord. So I want us to pray. We are going to be crying and praying to God of hosts and ask God, Father, as your hand was with Isaac of old, that Isaac of old in the Bible that you referenced, let your hand be upon me. Lord, let your hand be upon me for favor and glory. Open your mouth and pray. You have not eaten. You have denied yourself of food. Make use of this time and open your mouth and pray to God. Lord, envelope me, Lord, with your favor in the name of Jesus. Envelope my life with your favor. Surround me with favor like a shield in the name of Jesus. Father, make my life, oh God, be surrounded with your favor. All around fruitfulness. Let me be fruitful. May I never be barren in the name of Jesus. Let your favor bring me out for glory. Let your favor speak for me wherever I go. In the name of Jesus. Let me be honored by men. Both great and small. Let me be honored. Let me be enveloped with your greatness of favor. In the name of Jesus. May I never lack your favor in this season. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we are prayed. Amen. We are going to pray number 11. He said, Father, in my career, help me to always have a positive influence on people in Jesus' name. Let us open our mouth and begin to pray. Your career, in your workplace, whatever thing you are doing, in your business area, ask God, help me, oh God, to have positive influence on people. Never let me look down on anybody. Let me have positive influence influence on people let me oh god treat everyone in the fear of you oh god may i never do eye service may i never do partiality may i never judge people in my heart oh god help me to always have a positive influence on people in the name of jesus father we thank you in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen number 12 say father Help me to always think of being a blessing to others in, in the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The Bible, let's see what the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that two should walk in, that we should walk in him. Praise the Lord. Let's turn it into prayer right now. Begin to pray that Lord help me, oh God, to always walk, to always think of being a blessing to others. We are good work in the hand of the Almighty God. God has created us to be a good work. I want us to begin to pray, Father, make me to be a good work in everything, oh God, that I do. Help me to be a blessing to others in the name of Jesus. Father, help me to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Number 13. Let's open to the book of Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Sorry, Matthew 20, verse 26 to 28. I said, but it shall not be so among you, that whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whatsoever will be a sheep among a sheep among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be minister unto, but to be minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Praise the Lord. Let me begin to pray that Father give me, Father, give me a heart committed to serve like Jesus. Give me a heart committed to serve like Jesus. As I wait on you, change my heart. Change my mentality. Let me be humble. Let me love like Jesus loved. 
let me be compassionate as Jesus is so, was so compassionate. Lord, help me. Help me to serve as Jesus did, oh God. Father, we thank you. Let me, com let me, let my heart be committed to serve like Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Number 14. Father, in my career, help me to enjoy the fruit of my labor. May I not disappear before my glory will appear. In the name of Jesus. This is a powerful one. Let's begin to pray and say, God, according to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 13. Median, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 13. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. So we are going to pray and ask God, Father, in my career, help me to enjoy the fruit of my labor. May I not disappear before my glory will appear in the name of Jesus. Father, help me to enjoy that gift you have given us. That gift of the fruit of our labor. Father, Lord, help me to enjoy the fruit of my labor. To the glory of your name. Help me, O oh God, by your mercy. May I not disappear, O oh God, before my glory will appear. May I not disappear before the glory of my children will appear. May I not disappear before the glory of my life will appear. In the name of Jesus, be merciful to me, O oh God. And let this prayer come to pass. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. And finally on the list, we are going to be praying. Let's quickly open to the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. The Bible says, If thou faint not in the day of adversity, thy strength, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Let us begin to pray and say, Father, as the wind, is blow, as the wind blows, no matter how hard the situation, may I never quit or give up in trusting you in the name of jesus father lord show me mercy as the wind blows in this year oh god father no matter how the country look like no matter how the situation no matter how hard it is may i never give up or may i never quit or give up in trusting you in the name of jesus father show me mercy i will not give up no matter how it is when others are saying they say casting down I will be saying there's a lifting up in the name of Jesus. I say, look up to you. You are the pillar that holds my life. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the strength that I used to move around. Father, Lord, in your mercy, let the wind blow in my favor. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we give you praise. We love you, our God. Holy Spirit, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Finally, I want us to pray. And say, Lord, I shall wait upon you in this season. Give me mighty testimony. My, my, may my waiting never be in vain. I will not wait in vain. Ah, the, 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 the blessing that follow people that wait upon you. The reward that follow this fasting. I will be partaker of it. Nobody will take it from me. People will gather and celebrate with me. People will come and congr congratulate me. To the glory of your name. Let your mercy speak for me, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion on. Father, show me compassion in this season. Let compassion and mercy, let mercy be my portion. Let your glory surround me, O God. Let me have testimony upon testimony. Even before the end of this fast, Lord, let testimony begin to manifest in my life. Let testimony that speak begin to manifest in my life. Father, we thank you. Glory be to you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. And so, our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for the strength to pray. We thank you for the testimony that will follow all the prayers that we have prayed. The Bible says we should call upon you. You will answer us. And you will show us great and mighty things that we never knew of. We love you, God, because we know as we have cried unto you, you will answer us speedily. You will show us mercy. And our lives will never remain the same again. In the name of Jesus. Bless their assurance. We give you praise.
We give you all the glory, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord never sees. He said, His mercy.
to the following announcements while we prepare our offerings. FOX Axe Arena, the 11th edition of the FOS Axe Arena, the 28 days prayer starts on Thursday, 1st February from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. on the King's Court Zoom platform and all our social media platforms. Praise the Lord. RCCG programs. The following programs will begin for those who are interested. Number one, the School of Disciples for 2024 program will begin on Saturday, 10th February. Duration is for 11 months. That is, one Saturday a month. The cost is 50,000 Naira and the format is physical at the TKC. We're back to form to physical um, module now, no more virtual. Praise the Lord. RCBC Bible College 2024 program will begin on Sunday, the 25th February. The duration is for 12 weeks, that is every Sunday. The fee is 122,000 Naira. The format is also physical here at the TKC. The Redeemed College of Mission will begin on Saturday, 10th of February. The duration is four months, every Saturday at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The format is virtual. The fee is 60,000 Naira. For more information, please contact Dickness Tokwe Latubosu on this number, 0803. 342-2334 or you can also contact the church office. Holy Communion and Holy Ghost services with Daddy Gio. Holy Communion service for February with Daddy Gio we hold on Thursday, 1st February at 6 p.m. Please note that Faith Clinic will not hold this week at the TKC. Holy Ghost service we hold on Friday, 2nd February at 7 p.m. at the Redemption City. I believe uh, anybody that is interested in going with the church bus, you can contact the church office. Praise the Lord. Our midweek services, please remember that on Wednesday, to, from Wednesday to Friday, we have pray as you go from 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. The format is virtual. And then on Wednesdays, breaking of fast at 5.30 to 6 p.m. The format is both virtual and physical. We have some birthdays today. Is Sister Happiness Paul, is she here? Sister Happiness Paul, is she here? Sister Queen M.M., is she here? And Brother Peter Okoro Dudu. Brethren, let's pray for the celebrants. Let's pray that God will give them a special birthday present that will cause them to rejoice when they remember their birthday in 2024. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Offering time. If you have your tithes, please come to the front. The tithe baskets are in front. If you have your tithes, is there any tighter in the house? Praise the Lord. Remember the testimony our sister gave that she's always giving her tithes online. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your daughter. 
and perhaps those that are online that are giving their tithes. You say we should bring all the tithes to the storehouse that there may be meat in your house. This they have done in obedience to your word. Father, reward their obedience in the mighty name of Jesus. You say if we do this, you will open the windows of heaven and pour us down a blessing. Father, pour your daughter and those giving online a blessing that they will not have enough room to contain in the mighty name of Jesus. Let their band flow and overflowing in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, let's rise to our feet as we lift up our offering. Our Father and our God, we have come again to bring an offering. You say we should not come into your house empty-handed. Father, out of the abundance that you have given us, we have brought this token. Father, receive us and receive our offering in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let this offering speak for us any time that we're in need in the mighty name of Jesus. For those, O oh Lord, that are here and are not able to bring an offering today, Father, the next time a call for offering goes out, Give them more than enough so that they can give in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Father, let each and every one of us abound in your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. There are kings, there are kings.
your seat in your father's house. Thank you. God bless you for coming tonight. So now we're going to be talking briefly about power of mercy. We've heard so many things about mercy in this month of January. Many things. Our senior pastor has said it. Other ministers have said it. So defining mercy for you again will just be like I'm wasting your time tonight. So I've decided to talk tonight by the mercy of God on what is called the power of mercy. And our Bible passage can be found quickly in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Tonight, can we have that confidence and approach his throne of grace with confidence so that we can, have, we can get, have his, receive his mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I don't know how many of us have needs. I have needs. And a lot of times are my time of need. So God will help me tonight. Our anchor scripture for the month is Lamentation 3, 22 to 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is that faithfulness. Father, Lord, we thank you tonight. We give you praise. We know you will adore you. We thank you for your mercy. Please, tonight, diminish me and increase yourself. Open the heart of your people to hear. Open their heart to take in and assimilate. Open their, their ears to hear. Open my eyes to see, and, open, and please anoint my tongue to speak. And tonight, Lord, please take all the glory, take all the adoration, and let everything be yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Before we start at all, I want to just combine some few prayer points because we still have communion that we need to do. And I'd like you to, you may want to stand if you want, you may sit when you want, whatever position you want to take is fine with God because we are be- benefits and products of his mercy. I want you to please say, Father, I thank you for your mercies. And let me receive mercy to fulfill my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your mercies. Let me receive mercy to fulfill my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Let, let me receive mercy tonight to fulfill my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Mercy of God, please locate my foundation. Locate my life. Visit me. Announce me. Set to me. Mercy, please single me out and reposition me in the mighty name of Jesus. Power of God's mercy. Address the foundational problems of my life. Repair my life and let the wasted years of my life be recovered in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, by your mercy, I recover the wasted part of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. If I'm behind my heavenly ordained destiny, Lord, please let your mercy move me forward. If I'm behind my heavenly ordained destiny in any form or shape, Father, please move me forward in the mighty name of Jesus. By mercy of God, I shall not fish in the Dead Sea in the mighty name of Jesus. By the mercy of God, everyone here shall not fish in the Dead Sea in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father, because you always hear us by your mercy. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we are prayed. Amen. Please have your seat. You can welcome someone and say you are welcome, sir. Thank you. God's love couldn't have run out. It's merciful. Love couldn't have dried up because they are created new every morning. How great is his faithfulness. And the simplest way to interpret that is that if God does anything for you by his mercy, he has more than enough for the next person, for the next person, for the next person. And the mercy of yesterday is not sufficient for today. Praise the Lord. You know, a thousand times me personally have failed. And the only reason why I'm standing is because his mercy has kept me. That's why we do that song. Is I'm not standing because if I'm the one only God's hand, I will have left his sins. I'm not too patient. I'm a very impatient person. If you know me, you know that I don't have time for things. But it's only God that has, if God is not the one that is holding my hand, I will have let it go. And that's why we said just now in that song, 
God's mercy kept us so that he won't let us go. Is there anyone that God's mercy is keeping tonight? Or you are keeping yourself? Oh, he's keeping all of us, but I thought I'm the only one. Thank you. God bless you. God is faithful even in the hard times. At times, think we're going through things and we think God is not faithful. God's faithfulness is forever. And he's, fa- he's faithful even at, during hard times. This was a lesson that the children of Israel learned by fire by force in the wilderness. Um, they could not survive on old manner, nor could it be stored for future, according to Exodus chapter 16, verses 90 to 21. God not only feel mother's love for us, he has also sworn that his love will never fade towards us. But let's quickly run and say, why are God's mercies renewed every morning? Because God cannot waste time. You could have just created mercy and say, bam, this is mercy. It's forever. Just keep eating from it. They are new every morning because we need fresh proofs of God's love every day. God loved you yesterday. He saved you from accident. God can save you from one you see what they call it, RSS or whatever their name is, arresting you on the road. For no just cause. I've seen where um, marked vehicles stop people on the road and just say enter. And they enter thinking the people were police. And then something has happened after that. So the mercy that kept you yesterday from road accident may not be the same mercy that will keep you today from being robbed by somebody. may not be the mercy that will take you away from kidnappers tomorrow. So God's mercy, we as human beings need a fresh proof of it every, every day. And that's why his mercy are renewed every morning. Every morning, when the sun comes up, God wants us to have fresh proofs of his unchanging love and compassion for us. We wake up to a new beginning. Yesterday's troubles and dark nights are over. We see the beautiful sunrise in a new day. A rain shower falls, I mean, falls on graceful plants. The birds sing and prepare their nest. The squirrels camper about looking for nuts. These are some of God's gifts to us that we see. At times we cannot even clap. But you see, bad beach, we just be running, woo, and God is telling me if I cannot clap, that sea can clap. Praise the Lord. God promises that whatever needs we have for the day, God will meet these needs. Like he feeds the birds and clothes the flowers. Praise the Lord. The second reason why God's mercies are new every day is because we will have new challenges every day. The challenges of yesterday could be different from today. Yesterday it could be school fees. Tomorrow it could be house rent. The next morning it could be health. So because of that, his mercies are new every day. And that's why we ask, what will you face today? Nobody knows. We're only knowing what we face up to midnight. There will not be the same thing that you faced yesterday or what you will face tomorrow. They will be different. Each day has its own trials and difficulties. That's why the mercies are to be new every morning. Our Father knows that. That's our God. So he gives us new and fresh mercies and compassion that are just what we need for each day. The third reason, and I'm going to give you only four so that we can run, and there are quite a lot of them, why, we, why God's mercies are in every day. Every morning brings temptations and sins. S-I-N-S, sins. We can scarcely get our eyes open before some wrong thoughts or words comes along. So we constantly have need for new pardon. Every day we need God to pardon us for sins that we have committed. Even sins that we have not even set out. But God promises he will, with temptation, make a way of escape to us. Verse 13. We always make a way of escape for us because of his mercy. God's new grace and mercy will mean... Where sin abounds, his grace will much more abound. Praise God. Where sin abounds, God's grace will what? Will much more abound. Praise God. The fourth reason, quickly, is that each new day brings new duties which you cannot perform in the natural. As human beings, yes, we think we are strong, but we're not. God may call you to lay hands on a sick person or to cast out a demon or lead a person to faith in Christ. That's why God said, God is always faithful, according to Lamentation 3.23. They are new every morning, great is their faithfulness. Let's ask ourselves, what is mercy and why do we need it? Quickly. Mercy first compassion. That's what it does. It provides promising glints of light in a darkened world. 
is kindness, forward forgiveness, and empathy. Mercy chooses not to be offended. That's what mercy does. And compassion, compassionately, mercy sees what in heart behind awful words. When you are saying awful words to people, mercy sees that that, that heart is hurting. Praise the Lord. But let's be careful that mercy is not guaranteed. It's an act of compassion. Unlike grace, is, which grace is an act of favor. Mercy will not give us judgment that we deserve. We take our judgment away to break protocols. Praise the Lord. So, what does the Bible say about mercy? And there are quite a lot of stuff that the Bible says, but we just take two of them. Our anchor passage for the month is Lamentation 3, 22 to 23. And it said, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. That means mercy that you had when you were born will continue to be new every day till the day you pass. Praise the Lord. God's mercy will never end. God will not say, I gave you mercy yesterday, so you have taken your own portion of the mercy. Your account is now zero. Your account for mercy is always fully credited. And it's not because you have worked for it. Praise the Lord. If you look at the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 5, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. God's mercy, God has chosen to be merciful to his people. It's his choice. It's his prerogative. That's why lawyers call it prerogative of mercy. Where some people can just say, okay, you have committed offense, we let you go. Instead of serving 20 years, you've done four, you can go. Under the law, you are supposed to do 20 years for the offense. So God has chosen to be merciful to his people. Mercy is an expression of who God is and his love for us. And that is according to Exodus chapter 34 verses 6 and 7. And mercy has benefits, a lot of benefits, lots of benefits. We mentioned a few of them. I'm just wrapping up all the things that everybody has said in the last few teachings and Sunday services. They will now go to power of mercy. Luke 6, 35 to 36, NIV says, Love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you'll be children of the Most High, because God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Praise the Lord. So we are asking someone to show mercy tomorrow, show mercy tonight, because when you show mercy, God also shows mercy to you. It's not because the person has done the right thing or has done the wrong thing. You are showing mercy because you are a child of a merciful God. Praise the Lord. Mercy is a cornerstone characteristic of God. It is evidenced by its repetition in the scripture. I was trying to prepare for this uh, last week, for this teaching, and I counted, and there may be more, don't get me wrong, I'm not factual here, I counted at least 262 times that the word mercy was mentioned in the King James. 262 times. 152 times in the ESV. 99 times in the New American Version. 170, 170 times in the Amplified Version. If it's not important, God will not waste his time telling us about it. Praise the Lord. Well, we know that mercy and grace are related, but again, we'll talk about that quickly later. What are the characteristics of mercy? James 3, 17, NLT says, The wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy. Praise the Lord. Um, one of the things that mercy that we know about mercy that is the characteristics would be that mercy means being patient with people's quirks. If you are not patient when people say some things, you cannot call yourself to be merciful. Praise the Lord. Mercy means helping anyone around you who is hurting. Romans 12, 18. Romans 12, 8. Number three, mercy means giving people a second chance. Some people will say, over their dead body. I can't imagine human being that God created say, over my dead body. Because over your dead body, hundred things will happen. Hundred things will happen. 
the house where you are living today, you don't even know whether somebody's father was buried under that ground before you bought the land. And the person said, over my dead body, nobody will enter this room. And then he has passed, he's been buried, the carcass have decayed, somebody has bought the land, they even removed his, his bones, somebody has built on it. And he kept saying when he was alive, over his dead body. God will help us to anoint our tongue to know what to say in Jesus' name. So, mercy means giving people a second chance. Not because people are not going to offend you. Mercy means doing good to those who hurt you. It's difficult, but that's what the Bible says. Mercy means be kind to those who offend you. Mercy is very tough, to be honest with you. And that's why when God says he gives it to whoever he wants to give it to, I, did, I couldn't complain anymore because that is QED, at the end of, of discussion. God has ended that discussion for me. Mercy also means be kind to those who offend you. Mercy means building bridges of love to the unpopular. That's why we have to go out and evangelize to people whether they are willing or they are unwilling. It's difficult to teach the unwilling. I've had a boss who told me, this guy under you is not willing to learn, but you must teach him. I was like, I would like to somebody who doesn't want to learn. And I tried for three months. We always had button, and then later I just said, look, why don't you just do what this, that man said? I'll call the guy in the morning, Junior, and I'll go to his office. I'll say, good morning, how are you doing today? Let's talk about this. And he, he turned around at the end of the day. He turned around. It took about nine months, but he turned around. Praise the Lord. So mercy means valuing relationship over rules. The rule says, if you commit this offense, you have this judgment. But under the protocol of mercy, those judgment means nothing. When mercy speaks, judgment disappears. Praise the Lord. Now, the anchor, the passage for today itself is Hebrew 4, 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We all have need and we're going to approach him tonight. Romans eight fifteen tells us, that the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Mercy is God not punishing as our sins deserve. If God is to visit our judgment on us tonight, nobody will sit here. If you just imagine what you have thought about today, not what you have done physically, but what has gone through your mind, I say, ah, look at that man. I wish I'm doing all that is car. That's already a sin. How can that man have that kind of house? What work was he doing himself? I even work harder than him. You're already sinning. You have not said it out. You have not taken the house from the man. You have not stolen physically. So if you imagine how many sins we have committed every day, all of us will not be here. If God is to meet judgment on us, the mercy of God breaks protocol. Mercy of God is not punishing us as our sin deserves. Even if God gives us small punishment, we should still be thanking him. That God, I know he could have been bigger than this punishment too. I thank you for this. Praise the Lord. Can somebody thank God for some punishment he has ever received? Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for where you have punished me for wrongdoing because you do not even give me maximum punishment. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Mercy is deliverance from judgment. It's different from grace. Grace is extending kindness to the unworthy. Mercy brought grace that gave us the privilege to become the children of God. This act of mercy resulted in grace coming down. And I will explain that in a minute. So mercy beckoned grace. Let's transconnect the dot now. Mercy beckoned grace. Grace brought salvation. For the law as given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. If I were to follow the law of Moses, a lot of people would be blind. Because it would be eye for an eye, ear for ear, Teeth for teeth and the rest of them. But God gave us grace by his mercy. Praise the Lord. Grace came. Grace is a person. is Christ. The mercy of God brought him. So mercy can be said to be superior to grace. And theologians have discussed this severally. And they always come to the same conclusion. That mercy can be said to be superior to grace. Praise the Lord. For everything that God has done for us because of his mercy. The grace of God that we enjoy because of mercy. Favor that we enjoy because of his mercy. Praise the Lord. There's what they call covenant of mercy. And we talk about fear of them quickly. Covenant of mercy. And the Latin word for mercy is also mercy. M-E-R-C-E-S. 
which also means price or wages. It could be called price or wages paid for something. Remember the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Debt. But mercy took those wages away. It was paid by someone. And that's how we, are called, we can be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. Praise the Lord. It is a broad term that refers to compassion, forgiveness, and all those kind of things. And they are used in various areas of life. Let's quickly take some examples of mercy in the Bible. We take two of them so that we can move fast. How about six, but we take two. The children of Israel in the desert. Exodus 16, 3 says, If we only had died by the lost and in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, but you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. God certainly chose to be merciful to his people. He loved them despite their rebellion and ungratefulness. How many of us will take what those children of Israel, Israel have said to their boss? Somebody was trying to help you, and you are still complaining and grumbling. You will just tell the person you are your own, even to our children. Praise the Lord. God certainly chose to be merciful to them. He loved them despite their rebellion. God's covenant with them was out of mercy. He chose to bless them with what they did not deserve. I've heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord God. That's what the Bible says in Exodus uh, chapter 16, verse 12. Let's look at King David, for example. The Bible says in Psalm 51, verse 1, NIV, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. Why did the Bible say that? David, a man after God's heart, slayer of the giant Goliath and chosen king, committed adultery with someone's ex-wife, and then had her husband killed in battle, according to 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 12. Sin has the power to overtake even the most adios followers of Christ. So let's be careful. Don't let, don't let us think, oh, I'm so strong in Christ, I'm a strong believer, sin cannot come near me. It can. Praise the Lord. The God Almighty will save us from it by his mercy in Jesus' name. Consequences will, all be, will always become a reality, as they were for David. But God will never falter in his mercy for us. God had mercy on him. Paul, why they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not owe this sin against them. And Saul was there, giving approval to his death, according to Acts 7, 59, uh, chapter, verse 59 to uh, 58. But let's quickly see what happened here. Paul, formerly Saul, supported the crusade against Christianity. He was responsible for the death of many Christians. Then he ran into Jesus. I'm Jesus, who you are persecuting, he replied. Saul was struck blind, but opened his eyes to see Jesus. Jesus' mercy, Jesus mercy to forgive him ignited his faith and propelled him forward. The remaining was history. Praise the Lord. A daughter of Suman, we all remember. Jesus stopped, stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. But let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone, according to John 8, 6 to 8. And what happened? We don't know what he was writing in the dust. I don't know. But Jesus' mercy spoke loud enough for all to hear and be convicted. And the woman, we all know what happened. Mercy spoke. Mercy arose for her. Mercy will arise for us tonight in Jesus' name. We all know that true mercy, Moses was the only one on heart that saw part of God. He was the only man that spoke to God person to person, according to Exodus chapter 33, verses 18 to 19. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, but I'm pleased with you, because I'm pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. And what happened after that? We saw the other stories and this and that and that. That can only be mercy of God. We know the story of Elizabeth, a new baby, and all the things that happened after that and how the baby came. Praise the Lord. Because of time, let's just take the David example alone as, 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 a, as a case study. David. And that is why we talk about key of David, this of David, that of David. What did, David did nothing in the, in, 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 the, in the recess of it. Okay. 
Let's quickly take that and, we, and that will be only one we take. David is another case, classical case study of mercy. God told him, my mercy is with you. I've had, I've had mercy on you. David is synonymous with mercy in terms of human relationship. His second name should actually be mercy, to be honest with you. Look at the gravity of that mercy. When God was to come to the world in a human form, he came through the family of David. I wish he had come to my family. You can imagine I would be, in fact, I don't know what you call me, whether it's superintendent or Geo or something. Can you imagine David living here today and our Lord Savior had come through his lineage? How, how proud, how nice, how good I would be. Secondly, right now, there's a key of David that opens every door. God will give you the key of David tonight in Jesus' name. But let's, let's analyze it a little bit. Let's break it down. Let, let's be logical. If there's a key of David, that suggests that there's a house of David. If there's a house of David, then that suggests that there's a seat of David. If there's a seat of David, that suggests that there's a seat of mercy. Praise the Lord. The key of David is a term found in the books of Revelation and Isaiah. A key indicates control or authority. When somebody has a key, the person has control, he has authority. That's what key does. If somebody had the key to this auditorium today, and it locks all of us inside, we are supposed to break our fast. I'm sure we'll be praying to God for mercy, too, for the guy to come and open the door, because he has locked the door, because he has control, he has authority. That shows how powerful keys are. Okay? The key of David is a term found in Revelation and Isaiah. A key indicates control and authority, and having the key of David will give you, give anyone who has a key, control of David's domain. If you have a key, you have control of that house, of that domain, which is Jerusalem, the city of David, and the kingdom of Israel. Revelation 3, 7 reminds us, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can what? What he shows, no one can. You can see how powerful the key of David is. God will grant us key of David again in Jesus' name. The fact that in Revelation 3, 7, Jesus holds the key, this key, shows that is the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant. And that's why this ends. The ruler of the new Jerusalem and the Lord of the heaven. The Bible does not say that he had the key of Abraham. Because I kept wondering, what about Father Abraham? Abraham's blessings are mine. What about the key to that blessing? The Bible only said he holds the key of David. What did David do? to merit all these privileges. Nothing but mercy. Praise the Lord. Mercy will grant you what the mercy will take away judgment I deserve tonight in Jesus' name. Luke 5, 1 to 13, I will only read verse 1 and I will read the last verse. said, in the time of king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. When then angel of the Lord appeared, verse 11, to him, standing at the right side of the altar. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid. Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. I can't imagine, by Bible calculation, Elizabeth was about 140 years. The husband was about 145 years. I don't know how many of us here tonight are 140 years, or 145 years. Even at 90, a man is already bending a little bit. Yes? Like my grandmother used to say, old age is tough. We all pray to grow old, but old age is tough. God will grant God good old age in Jesus' name. So you can imagine someone at that age and that level, an angel of the Lord was visiting them. The man was already far dead as a man at 145, to be honest with you. Okay? Uh, but mercy came to their rescue, according to Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 7 and 11 to 13. That was mercy at work. We know the remaining story. Look at the pile of dry bones, for example, in, in Ezekiel 37, 3 to 3, or 3 to 5, verses 3 to 5. These bones were dead a long time ago. Then mercy came. Mercy spoke. 
Mercy spoke to them. If mercy can locate those dry bones, how much more you that is living and praising God? That means the same mercy that located dry bones that walked again will locate you in Jesus' name. Look at the thief on the cross, for example. He was a thief. He got judgment he deserved to be, if he's still. In that cross, you have only one innocent person in the middle, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the right was a thief who already knows that well. He committed the offense, so he deserved the judgment. On the left was the same person. I mean, was, was, was another person. But what, what did the guy say? One of the most outstanding demonstrations of mercy in the Bible is the story of this thief on the cross. Somebody already thought he was hellfire straight. That's where he was going. Law and justice caught up with, with the two of them. Between them was an innocent man, our Lord Jesus Christ, who chose to suffer justice for the ones he loves like me and you. The two thieves on the cross were without hope. No hope anymore because they were already condemned. But before the end of the clock would turn, mercy came for one of them. The guilty of death, hell, was pardoned. Just like that. Yes, mercy came for him. Mercy spoke. And our Lord said, today you will do what? Meet with me in paradise. This is the nature of mercy. Without work, without hope, without merit, the thief landed in heaven. That is mercy. Mercy can be mysterious at times. It can be indescribable on eye works. And that's how our God is indescribable. We cannot describe the whole part of God. If God shows you, gives you food, it's provision. If God is you, is the healer. If God keeps you safe, it's your safety. So that is how mercy works. Praise the Lord. And that's why Psalm 103 verse 8 says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he abhor his anger forever. And verse 10 says, He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. That is mercy. Praise the Lord. Note that the sentence of the psalmist here, for as the heaven, if you look at that psalm up to verse 14, see that the psalmist said, For as the heaven is high above the heart, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. So, one of the things we need to do is to fear God, and the great mercy of God will work for us in Jesus' name. My simple definition of mercy is to say that the end of all prayers is mercy. The end of all prayers is mercy. It's good to thank God, it's good to do every other thing, but the final conclusion of any prayer is mercy. When we pray and nothing has happened, then let's turn to prayer of mercy. Because it has no condition. You are not going to say, God, because I pay tithes, bless me. That does not, it doesn't move mercy. You are not saying, God, because I'm a faithful, I give offering faithfully, please bless me. No. When we're asking for mercy, it has no condition attached to it. It should just be a prayer, God help me by your mercy. And the same God who did it for the blind Bartimaeus who said, Jesus, son of David, this, 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 we do the same for you in Jesus' name. Let's leave the, all the things about other people about that God has been merciful to, like the adulterous woman and the rest of them. Mercy of miracles. In what we read in our uh, text, Hebrews 4.16, the Bible says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Okay? In, sometimes in our time of need, most of the time we need miracles to happen, to be honest with you. There are some things we can't do anything about. It just takes God's miracle. The mercy of God is a platform for continuous miracles in all areas of our life. There's no exemption. The mercy of God is a platform for continuous miracles in all areas of our life. There's no exemption. We can obtain mercy for any miracle at all. When, when do we need mercy of God? And I will run through quickly about 10 of them. Every day. So that means... You may need mercy in the morning, you need it in the afternoon, you need it in the evening. We need mercy of God every day. You need mercy of God when you are in a complete mess. You need mercy of God when your vision is bigger than you. What you want to do. Can you imagine, somebody thought about this building. You think it's just architectural brain? 
He took the message to say, okay, we are going to feel this way, we are going to pie this way, we are going to raise the money this way, we are going to do that this way. Any of those things could have ended in zero without the mercy of God. Praise the Lord. So you need mercy of God where your vision is bigger than you. Can I advise someone tonight to have a vision that is bigger than him or her? What's your vision tonight? You always want to be the house in Lekki. Think about banana. And banana is small. There are bigger things coming out of banana. There's going to be Mango Island. There's going to be Orange Island. There's going to be Panapu Island. Praise the Lord. Think about those things bigger than you. And ask mercy of God to help you. Praise the Lord. Number four. When do you need mercy of God? You need mercy of God when you are an executive beggar. You know what that means? You are educated. You are qualified. But begging to survive. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. You need mercy of God when you have been totally condemned in the court of men. Somebody has committed, maybe uh, he has killed somebody, and the, law, the judge has said he should be sentenced to death. The only thing that can take that person out of that judgment is mercy of God. Number six, you need mercy of God when they say nothing good can come out of you. And there are people like that. They have said nothing good can come out of you. Say, ah, he didn't even do well in school. He had only pass. Nothing, can, nothing good can come out of him. And the person shows up, becomes MD of a company tomorrow. That, it cannot be because he's hardworking. Because the people who are smarter than him, who are also more hardworking, they could not get there. It will take mercy of God. Praise the Lord. You need mercy of God when all hope is lost. You don't know what to do anymore. God, I'll give it back to you. I don't even know what to do about this anymore. There's something I can do. My father cannot help me. Daddy Joe cannot pray this matter out. It's not about prayer now. At that point, you need mercy of God. Number eight, you need mercy of God when no man can answer your questions. At times you have questions in your heart, no man can answer. And I have family members that have asked me questions, I couldn't answer them. And I'll give you a simple example. I know a young man who said, Sir, Daddy Gio prayed for mommy. Dr. Luko, I prayed for mommy, but mommy still passed. So why can you tell me that God heard prayer? And I couldn't answer that question. But the only thing I said was that God answered they give you an answer that may not be what you want. And you is still not satisfied. So when no one can answer your questions, you need mercy of God. Praise the Lord. When everything around you fails, everything you put on is just failing. Then you need mercy of God. When you are swimming in the ocean of failure, everything you do, fail. You think other people are passing with ease, you are failing. Then you need mercy of God. When all your contemporaries have advanced and you are left behind. You need mercy of God. It's not because you are not hardworking. And I'll give you another example quickly. I know someone who, has, who was very good in school. He had a degree in engineering. All he has done in his life to teach in, they call it extra moral school or something. All his life, his colleagues have become MD of companies. So it's not about not being hardworking. At that point, all he needed was mercy of God. Praise the Lord. God has a lifeline for me and you. Tell your neighbor, God has a lifeline. And I'm going to read to you Jeremiah 33, 1 to 3. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the heart, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. That is the telephone number of God. God's lifeline. And it's very simple. Jeremiah 33, 1 to 3 is a promise of restoration by the mercy of God. That's the way theologians theologian, uh, described it. God has made it known and clear that he has a lifeline that anyone in prison, or, prison of life or prison condition or similar condition that we have described above can call and receive help. And that lifeline, that telephone number is mercy. Praise the Lord. Mark 10, 47 says, When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We all know who said so. That, what did that person do? It, it died the God's lifeline, the telephone number of God, that God must listen to, which is mercy. Praise the Lord. Mercy is God's lifeline for miracles. Whatever your condition or situations or positions may be, when you switch over to God's lifeline, miracles cheaply follow. People start wondering, oh, you're a superstar. That would be your portion in Jesus' name. 
when you're running from pillar to pillar, post to post, job to job, country to country, jackpa, no jackpa, in terms of desperate need, in all that, call the lifeline of mercy. Can you tell your neighbor, call the lifeline of mercy. When God's outline is available to you in form of mercy, miracles, uncommon achievements, success become a common place in your work with God. Praise the Lord. Today, the power of God will break protocol in your life, we break barrier, we break tribal sentiments, we break gender limitation, we break sicknesses and diseases, we break skin color limitation in Jesus' name. Mercy is unique. Because of time, I will run through them without explanation, and then God will give us the explanation in Jesus' name. Mercy is a gift from God. If not for his mercy, he will punish us each time we sin, according to Romans 9, 15 to 16. It does not, therefore, depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. Number two, some people will never have result of either married or having children or have breakthrough, if not for the mercy of God. If you imagine what they have done in their life, they wouldn't have. It, it can only take mercy of God. It's not prayer. It's not fasting. It's not tithing. It's not offering. When every other prayers are fed, the prayer of mercy will arise. The mercy of God prevails over judgment. Even when people judge you, the great mercy of God overrides it. That's how unique mercy of God is. You need the mercy of God to achieve good success. You can have success. To have good success requires the mercy of God. Somebody can have money you buy a bed, but you won't be able to sleep. You need mercy of God. Mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. Mercy of God are new every morning. Mercy of God is from generation to generation. Those are the uniqueness of God's mercy. God's lifeline of mercy is open to all, to everyone. Reach for the power of God's mercy today. It will delete your past errors, your past mistakes, and it will create a new present and a glorious, glorious future for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me please sound a note of only there are hindrances of God's mercy. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 16 says that clearly. Um, some of the hindrances, I will just run through them. Deliberate sin is hindrance to God's mercy. Using false method is, is, is hindrance. Engaging in legal business, you cannot be doing something wrong and you're asking God to have mercy on it. God cannot have mercy on you building on a land that you stole from your brother after killing him. And you say, God, have mercy. God, have mercy. Okay? Engaging in legal business and doing all other things that are not in godly way are hindrances to God's mercy. God can still override them if he wants. That's why it's prerogative to God. Unforgiveness is hindrance to mercy. Evil speaking, idolatry, wickedness, immorality, ungodly living, robbing God of things that, that God deserves, including God's glory, are hindrances to mercy. Praise the Lord. Tonight, are you ready to accept God's mercy in your life? It's a question we all have to answer. And it's individual. Jesus didn't come to judge you. He came to show you mercy. Because mercy, mercy triumphs over judgment, according to James 2.13. There will be a judgment day, but Jesus came to offer you mercy now, today, so that you can experience the power and joy that come from working with him. But there's one condition. You need to ask for his forgiveness and mercy, according to Acts 2.21, because the Bible says, anyone who asks for mercy from the Lord shall have it and shall be saved. That's TLB. If you are ready to do that, then let us pray. Dear God, I want to have deep and abiding faith in you. I confess that I have sinned and that I need your forgiveness and mercy. Thank you for loving me so much that you sent Jesus to die for my sins so that I can be forgiven. Jesus, our Lord Jesus, you promised that anyone who believes in you can have a relationship with you and spend forever with you in heaven. I believe in you and accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please accept me into your family and help me to follow you faithfully and spend the rest of my time serving you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus says, I give unto my sheep eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall, they, shall any pluck them out of my hands. 
God is our rock. He will never fail us. His mercy are forever. We are reassured. We are assured and reassured that God will never take his love away from us. How many have had battles lately? Praise the Lord. Is there anyone here tonight that needs God's mercy but you don't know Jesus yet? Because God's mercy can only come to you if you have a relationship with him. If you know in your heart of heart that you don't know Jesus yet and you want to know him tonight, there are pastors in the house that will pray for you. You can just wave to me right now. We can do that quickly. Settle that first before we keep demanding what mercy should do for us. Praise the Lord. If there's anyone online, you can do the same. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins. Accept me and make me your son. Blot away all my sins and transgressions, and I will live for you. I'll follow you forever in Jesus' name. And it's that simple. Then you start going to a Bible-believing church, and they will keep upholding you, keep strengthening you, keep praying for you, and the Almighty God will do all the rest for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Before we start going to question and answer, uh, because of time, I want to quickly just uh, remember that we have communion to take today, okay? And I would like our ministers to please help, our pastors in the house to please help. Um, communion is more than a religious tradition. It's a gateway into the presence of God. It's all the promise of cleansing, healing, intimacy, and fellowship. So it's not something we should take for granted. Communion is more than religious tradition. It is a gateway into the presence of God, number one. It holds the promise for cleansing us, for healing us, for intimacy and fellowship. And the Bible says, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, For I received from the Lord what I also passed unto you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. This, in, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. But let's quickly share the bread. You can eat the bread, but you wait for everyone that we all take the cup together. Praise the Lord. And you can be asking God for his uncommon mercy as we do this. As we continue this, we can be asking God for his uncommon mercy that the communion tonight will grant us common mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to just give you some few prayer points as we take the communion so they can be praying as you go ahead.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new test covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And Matthew 26, 27 says, For he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my body of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's thank God. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As we take this, Lord, Father, please let it cleanse our body. Let the forgiveness of sin. Let it turn our life around. Let mercy find our foundation in the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We are please let's thank God for this because it's not everybody that has the opportunity to take communion. It's not everybody that works for God has helped us for this to happen tonight. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want because the the, the blood has the power to cleanse. I want to say tonight, say, Father, Father, Father. I command. Every spiritual invasion into my spirit man to live right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I command every spiritual invasion into my spirit man to live right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I command every spiritual invasion into my spirit man to live right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let God arise and his anger and in his anger and fight for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, Lord, let God arise in his anger and fight for his children in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bring honey out of the rock for us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. By your blood, bring honey out of the rock for us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, uproot every evil thing in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. By your mercy, uproot every evil thing in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let mercy locate our foundation and uproot everything that you have not planted in our body in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, please, by your mercy, locate our foundation, uproot everything that you have not planted in our body in the mighty name of Jesus. By Father and Father, Lord God, make your sharp, make us your sharp battle axe in the mighty name of Jesus. Make us your sharp battle axe tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us tonight. Help us tonight. Riko shakaya koto kazuka yama. Iba roto kazuka ya robo shakaya kitama. Rika roto kazuka ya robo shakaya koto kayama. Riba roto kaya robo shakayama. Riba ba riba ba riba ba. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we are prayed. Father, we thank you tonight for your blood, for your body. Father, let it, according to your promise, cleanse us, heal us, give us intimacy, and further fellowship with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we are prayed. Amen. Can we please give Jesus a clap of him? Please have your seat. Please have your seat. One minute. One minute. I know we are almost out of time, but in case we have anybody that has a question on the subject of mercy, we have treated it for four weeks already in the month of January. If there's any questions in house about why is mercy that powerful, what can we get out of it, like we discussed, and what do you think mercy can do for you? We can ask these questions quickly, few questions, and we have seen up that can answer these questions right here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, I don't think there's any question from anyone. I don't know whether our senior pastor, if there's anything you want to help us add. Please, to this. Oh, okay, there's one. Please go ahead, sir. Sir, uh, I know it's good to pray that God have mercy and God have uh, let your grace speak for me. But I want to ask, is, let's say we, are, we want to pray in the morning. Should we be praying for mercy of God or God, let your grace speak for me. And I want to ask that you classify all things as mercy. But what are the things God do that, let's say, 
Uh, it's the grace of God that speaks for you for this. God, you say, uh, let's say you find favor, is mercy. You do this, is mercy. I want to know what are the things God is doing for us. That is the grace that is working for those things. Praise the Lord. I will answer just in two lines and then I'll pass with airports. One thing is for sure, no human being will give you mercy. Mercy is prerogative of God. Because it's a judgment that you deserve and God is not giving you punishment to measure up to that judgment. Grace is a blessing that you get that you don't deserve. Somebody gives you money without you don't deserve that money. But if you, if, you, if you commit an offense that requires five years imprisonment and Supreme Court has said after 30 years in court, you, the person must go, to court, must go to jail for five years and God's mercy steps in. Somebody can just say, oh, you know what? This young man has a future. He should not go to jail. Let's take him out. That is mercy. Praise the Lord. But I don't know whether any of our pastors will help us, want to help us expand shit on it. Praise the Lord. So, they are, okay. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, my question is, what if uh, maybe you go for evangelism, then you preach for unbeliever, then he accepts? Is that one, is it grace or uh, mercy? Please. Okay. Sir? Yeah, you, you, you convert somebody. Is it grace or is it mercy? That's the question, right? Okay. Praise God. Just to respond to the, oh, okay. Okay. the first Thank brother, you, right? For me, it's, don't get it twisted on this, whether it's mercy that is working, whether it's grace that is working, right? You've explained what mercy means and what grace means. But you can't find grace if you don't obtain mercy. Bible says, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. You're only obtaining grace, or grace is working for you because you've already obtained mercy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, grace, in addition to how he defined it, is all there is to God. That's why when you see someone manifest the dimension of God, you say he has grace. So, all there is to God. So, for you to be able to assess all there is to God, you first have to obtain mercy to gain access into the grace that will be speaking for you. So, when you wake up in the morning, my brother, pray both mercy and grace. Anyone that is working, the summary is that something is working. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. And I said before that mercy is superior to grace. I said that before. There have been various writers by men of God about differentiating mercy and grace. And they all came to this conclusion that mercy is superior to grace. Praise the Lord. Somebody asked a question. No, my brother asked another question. I don't know whether anybody wants to. He said when you convert someone from evangelism, is that mercy or is grace? And pastor wants to help us to answer that question. Thank you, sir. The, the question has been answered already. Okay. Um, I just want to try to, try to dis- differentiate between grace and mercy. If um, there is a sinner standing there and grace is here, grace sees that sinner in the light of guilt and condemnation that's what grace is seeing because grace wants to walk in the life of that person to take away the guilt to take away the condemnation but mercy is seeing the same person it's not seeing the guilt it's not seeing the condemnation it's seeing that sinner as someone who is in need and requires mercy. Okay? So, one person, one sinner, but the two are seeing the person from different perspectives. But, does the person require both mercy and grace? Yes. Because if that person, that sinner, he is in a miserable situation. Why grace will take care of the condemnation, the guilt? Mercy will lift him from that miserable situation. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. 
part of what we said before at the beginning was that mercy is not guaranteed. It's an act of compassion. And like grace, it's an act of faith. Grace is different. You, you deserve, you don't deserve 10 errors. Somebody gives you 10 errors. That is God's grace. You've committed an offense. You deserve punishment. God takes that punishment away. That's mercy. But do we need the two of them like a pastor said? The answer is yes. Praise the Lord. Verse 1 is superior. Mercy is superior to grace. And I keep saying it. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead, ma'am. Praise the Lord. The Bible talked about um, uh, David, as in the cure of David, the tabernacle of David, everlasting covenant of the sure mercies of David. Please, I want to ask, what is the meaning of David? What is the meaning of what? David, the name David. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, I've said before, there's what they call Davidic Covenant. Okay? And that there's a key that God said, the key of David. And I say, if there's a key of David, then there's a house of David. If there's a house of David, there's a seat of David. Remember, we, we said that before. And what that means is that the key of David is what gives you control and access. David did not do anything specifically to deserve that. He only got it by mercy. And he got it by mercy again. God allowed the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ to come from his lineage. I don't know whether you get what I'm saying. So that mercy alone was not given to any other person apart from him. That is why when we came to Davidic Covenant, it's powerful because it's a key that opens any door, that unlocks any door. That's why the Bible says, when he shuts a door, no one can open. When he opens, no one can shut. Yes, sir. Talking about the meaning of David. David means beloved. Favorite. Beloved. Favorite. That's the meaning of David. The literal meaning. Praise the Lord. Another, another. Oh, okay. I thought there was no question at the beginning. <laughs> okay, ma'am. Well, it's not a question. Um, I, I, I saw an example that I thought might help um, when trying to differentiate between, um, <clears throat> between mercy and grace. <clears throat> so it's taking from Luke 5, um, 17 to um, 26. And that's the story about um, Jesus healing the paralyzed man that was carried on uh, by his friends into the synagogue, right? Um, so in that story, um, Jesus said to the, uh, seeing their faith, it says in verse 20, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. I'm reading from NLT. And then, um, <clears throat> sorry. And then um, in the subsequent um, verse, um, he says, um, is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I'll prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up and walk, uh, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. So the young man, your sins are forgiven. I think that's a perfect example of, um, you know, that was God's mercy. Right, and then um, stand up, pick up your mats, and go home. That was total grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, just to expand a woman to what our sister has said, um, we said before that the key of David is a term found mainly in Revelation and Isaiah. And we said the key is an indication of control and authority. Therefore, the key of David will give control of David's domain. Because if there's a key of David, there's a house of David. When you have the key of David, then you have control over the contents of the house of David. Okay? And when we do that, what happens next is, what the Bible says is, in Revelation 3, 7, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these are the words of him who is holy and true. Okay? Who holds the key of David? What he opens, no one can shut what is short, no one can open. And the Bible describes David as a man after God's heart. So, like a pastor said, when you are a man after God's, it means 
you have favor over you. That's why you're a man after God's heart. Praise the Lord. I don't know what that means our sister's answer or not. Praise the Lord. Another question? Okay, sir. Somebody asked a question. Oh, okay. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think a lot of the questions that have come in tonight have come from um, a position of um, misconception. I think that mercy, even though our pastor has said that mercy is superior to grace, I think that mercy and grace are, are God's nature and none is superior to the other. Praise God. Um, is, if, if, if you see how God introduced himself to Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 34 from verse 5, all, they are all part of him. They are all part of God's nature. One, yes, mercy moves God to be gracious to you, but doesn't mean that mercy is superior to grace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So rather than asking for which one should I ask for first, just ask for God's presence in your life. Both mercy and grace will show up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. I, Do we, Oh, another yes, question. Um, no, it's not a question. I just wanted to read something. So it says, mercy is God not giving us what we deserve, and grace is God giving us something we do not deserve. So let me read it again. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve, and grace is God giving us something we do not deserve. But let's qualify that what. When it comes to mercy, the what is punishment. When it comes to what for grace, that what is blessing. So it's a big gap. Praise the Lord. Okay, please go ahead. So I want to say something. Okay, time is past, so um, we give you all the glory. Yes, sir. We give you all no. We give you all the glory. We give you. For this privilege you have given unto us to come and learn at your feet. Thank you for dining with you. It's a privilege to you be all the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your son you used to bless us. Father, we pray, oh God, let your mercy and grace locate him also in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for we are prayed in Jesus' name. The grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow up all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. You have been advised to look for the two, but in this our grace, you know we mentioned the two grace came mercy also came so always invite the two like you were told jesus yeah, you have done it again jesus yeah.